On November 11, 1885, she began as a charming, loving, sweet-tempered child. That and his bravura good looks made him the family favorite. The man to be famed for his first discipline knew little of it in his own early life. He, he had his way in, in virtually everything he did. Uh, he was given a horse. He was given a saddle. Uh, he was allowed to roam the vast estate in, in Southern California. He grew up a, a happy-go-lucky, totally unlike the, the character that he later became. The golden-haired boy seemed flashingly bright at play. But at lessons, he was a disaster. Even the worshipful Aunt Nanny began to suspect her beloved nephew was behind it all dim-witted. The problem was the maddening, then unknown affliction, dyslexia, which caused his senses to garble writing. I had trouble with my A's, B's, and uh, uh, what was that other letter? They were afraid to send him to school until he was about 11 or 12 years old because they would be embarrassed that he would be ridiculed by his classmates. His father and his aunt nanny read to him. They read the classics, they read the Bible. Bravely, young Georgie plunged into Pasadena's classical school for boys where he had to develop a photographic mind to make even acceptable progress in reading and mathematics. Yet he shone in ancient and modern history. He would pattern himself after the great heroes, and for a pattern, that meant military heroes. Although George S. Patton would live to be 60 years old, he actually lived in America's mind and heart for just about three of those years, 1942 through 1945. But what a three years they were. In the biggest and most flaming campaigns of World War II, he embodied the cutting edge of American vengeance and power against the Axis hordes. He broke Hitler's legions with the headlong elan of the hard-riding Western cavalryman that he indeed was. 